welcome to episode 12 of The Scumbag. I am here with Felix Biederman as usual. Hello everyone. And today we're discussing a subject he's just getting into, it's called politics, and he, he is new to podcasting, especially about politics, so it's a very big day for him. Yeah, I have uh, lived my entire life not really known what politics are, but uh, this election has gotten me into them. I've learned a lot. Um, despite this being the first election where I wasn't either on probation or parole or in a juvenile hall, uh, I've decided this is the worst election of my life. I would like to unplug 2016 and plug it back in, please. I would like to reset 2016, and I'd also, if it was a TV show, like to recast it. I mean, I know I can't be the only one thinking that. I feel like we're in the season finale of 2016, and we're on the, the, the uh, first down. Yeah, and uh, the coach <laughs> is mad. But this is this is really what we're getting into, which is, I have I have now, in, I've been in America for... Let's say three election cycles. I've been on the edge of one. I was it's still, and I've been here since two thousand and eight. But I was here a bit before that, so I've kind of seen the run up. I remember being here in I think it was oh five oh six and seeing the kind of Hillary run up to wanting to be the Democratic candidate. And I was around when social media and Twitter were discussing Obama's second time around. And this this election appears to have brought out more neuroses and insanity in people than really any event I have seen since. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is I don't know. We may be we may be in a bubble because we uh, we have to look at a lot of members of the media more than the average person does. Uh, but I have never seen people act as disgustingly. In an election of my lifetime, outside maybe 2004, that may have been the dumbest election of my life. Uh, this one's pretty up there, though. Yeah, and it's it's one of my favorite th- one of my favorite things about Twitter and Facebook, and that's the one thing as well. It does cross that divide. It's one of those rare subjects that does. Like it's the election and sports that really does it. But my God, everyone. Everyone's getting in there and everyone has remarkably similar opinions. And I don't mean like Trump is bad. It's like they have the same jokes and the same statements and they all, there's this like repeti- there's this weird repetition to the discussion of the election that just confuses me. It ju- it's just, it gives me a headache some days. Yeah. Um, the biggest repetition that I've seen are people who like throw up their hands in despair of it, like, uh, oh, this uh, 2016, can we just go home? Oh, the day isn't even done yet. Which, like, A, you're a member of the political media. Like, this election isn't, t- this is not beneath you. This is the first election that is finally on its surface as retarded as our political media class. Uh, yeah. There's nothing beneath these people. I don't know why they think that, like, somehow this is too undignified for them or too stupid. This is the first election that is actually fully as stupid as our political culture is. And I I feel that as well, though, you're seeing people come in and don't get me wrong. I I look, I force like, like acid in my eyes. I look upon the political media, too. But I'm seeing people from all over and they're just like. I'll log on to Facebook and I'll see like one friend from college and he'll have like a 15 paragraph rant about how Hillary Clinton took money once from someone somewhere. And I'll distinctly remember this guy like being too stupid to play Scrabble. Yeah, no, there are a lot of people. um, It's kind of in the same genus of, uh, Hey, folks, I don't get too political. You mostly know me for dropping out of college because I played bridge too much. Uh, here <laughs> is my opinion about uh, being pro-life. And that's and that's one thing I will add, though. When I say this is someone who I do not know for their political discourse, I don't mean that this person is like a Trump supporter. In fact, a remarkable amount of them, this isn't an attack on Bernie Sanders or his is it's yes you get the trump ones but you get just as many hillary clinton fans 
Bernie Sanders fans doing the same kind of thing where it's like, this is why I believe in Hillary Clinton. This is why I think it's changing everything. And I'm getting British people doing it as well. That's the weirdest thing. That's the, the strangest impulse. The strangest impulse I've seen is... I saw this in 2004, too, uh, when Libs set up a website called We're Sorry, where Americans could apologize to Europeans for re-electing Bush. What? And there's this similar anxiety here where uh, sort of the media elite are like, uh, oh, we look really stupid in front of the rest of the world. Do we? Uh, because I think like every other nation's politics are as retarded or if not more so than ours. Uh, yeah. I mean, going to if you look at England's history and remove the Brexit, I'm tired of fucking hearing from people. I read I had a random person who I've literally seen only tweet about like apps for like eight years. OK, I've not been on Twitter for eight years, but like ever since I've been on Twitter, that's all she's ever said. And randomly she goes, England's a fucking shithole and it's so terrible. I'm glad that fucking country and its shitty food is done. I'm like, what the fuck? Why? Yeah, well, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and that's what it's, she, she didn't take that well. But it's, I'm seeing people, like, take out the Brexit. But if you looked, we had riots in London. We have had the BNP before UKIP got significant power. We've had, like, shit going on for a while. America doesn't need to apologize for doing stupid shit. We've been right there with you for a while. France had riots, too. I mean, the world is having some issues, surprisingly enough, because... The middle class, lower middle class, and uh, the, the the poorest people in the world are getting kind of treated like shit, surprisingly, and they have a bigger voice, and they're angry. But no, it's all Trump's fault. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, they're... So, we have, we have this, like, shitty dialogue about the exasperation of this election. There are two parts to it. One are, what is sort of the implied disgust as if this is somehow beneath our political culture? Uh, and my favorite thing that it uh, it's a historical that we'd have an election this disgusting <laughs> as if we, we we've never done that before or we've never had, you know, like we didn't have an entire, uh, you know, half of the country that fought a war to maintain slavery. Yeah. Uh, but then the other thing is if you do enough mental gymnastics to think that you this is an aberration and you as a member of the media are some sort of steward of normalcy then you have to pretend like everything is going fine and all the psychic pain that is causing Le Pen in France and uh, uh, UKIP and all these other things all over the world especially in Western Europe uh that there is no cause for this, and it just sort of uh, it's like spontaneous human combustion, and uh, we have to de fuck up people by talking down to them and shaming them, forgetting that uh, this is a reaction to this is a straight up rejection of liberal values. This is a complete rejection of sort of like globalist liberalism, and they can't comprehend that you can't shame people back into believing something that they have outright rejected. And it's hilarious as well because people are, and I'm, I'm just going to address this head on, this whole Ken Bone thing is being brilliant to me because it's amazing in how people are acting like this has never happened before. That there is, yeah, sure, we haven't had the virality quite that much, but I seem, I seem to remember the Conservative Party dragging out Joe the Plumber. I'm surprised. Yeah. Had, had he been a Trump supporter, they would have absolutely picked up Ken Bone. He would, they would have paraded him around like a Christmas tree. And everyone's like, this is the first time this has happened to the random guy has been it. No, it's not even close to the first time. I I wasn't there for the Bush situation. But I mean, I mean, had Ken Bone actually chosen the side, whichever side it would have been, they would have picked him up. I kind of, and, and I consider myself far more left-leaning, but it's like, I kind of wish he would have voted Democrat just to watch as, like, the Hillary campaign, like, grabbed him. It's like, yeah, Slay Queen, Ken Bone. And then they would have found all the Reddit shit where he's, like, Trayvon Martin got what he deserved. And just watched as they desperately tried to, like, like say, oh, I'm sorry. That would have been kind of funny. Uh, but, like, I, I saw this coming because, uh, you know, when he came up there, and he's like, oh, I don't know whether to vote for Clinton or for Trump. Well, I mean, I imagine if you're undecided on voting for Trump, you're still quite open to the idea. 
I imagine you have some like weird racial opinions. Yeah, or like, and you like, yeah, and if you look that, and and the great thing as well was watching the liberal people I know desperately trying to pretend they weren't just laughing at the fact that he was super fat and like he wasn't even that fat, but like they were clearly making those suggestions that he was like a fatty, fatty nomades. And he had like a tight sweater on. I saw tight sweater said a few times during it and then it disappeared into the ether. And they were like, oh, we were laughing at his name. Laughing. Oh, it, it's, it's uh, Carl Diggler. That's why I'm laughing. It's like, no, you were laughing because of the funny looking fat man. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, he was, he was just funny and he was like fat in a funny way. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. But, like, you know, don't act. You can't you can't laugh at the guy who's fat in a silly way and then like be, you know, say, ah, oh, this, uh. Oh, God damn it, 2016, so beneath us. No, it's not. <laughs> it's like You're just laughing at the funny fat guy with the boner name. And that's the thing as well. It's exactly the kind of shit that Trump... I'm surprised Trump wasn't just like, Dodd boner. And like, like because that's it. We were sadly within a much worse thing that Trump had said. But it was exactly the kind of thing where the liberals have been like sneering at Trump supporters for like fat shaming people. And it's just the wash of just this weird cultural thing of just like, oh, it's okay because he's undecided. We can pick at him. Maybe this is the most bipartisan shit that's happened in this election. Well, it is like the it's a kind of partisanship we haven't seen in a while where liberals are like, okay, so these absolute ghouls from the Bush administration, like Paul Wolfowitz and. The Kagans and uh, also, you know, Republican like George H. W. Bush has indicated he'll vote for Hillary Clinton, and they're just like just not not thinking about the implications of any of these fucking monsters. George H. W. Bush, who invaded two countries, who like helped invade, spearhead the invasion of two countries during Reagan that he had dealings with during Iran Contra and his previous period in the CIA, who committed a war crime on the highway of death in Iraq, uh, who let hundreds of thousands of Shia march to their death by telling them to rise up in Iraq and saying that they would, the United States would back them with air support, just knowing that they would go off and get slaughtered. We weren't going to lift a finger for them. No. It's just the fact that they are for Hillary and against Trump is completely absolving for them. And if you wonder how... You cannot cheer the endorsement of these people and then on the other hand go, how did we get to this? We yeah. got to this with about half the people that are endorsing Hillary. That's how we got here. And it's amazing, though, because what I felt with Hillary, and this is on a very general level because I, unlike you, jokes aside, I'm not that, you also can't vote, but I'm not that well read on politics. I try and keep up. That has not stopped people I know from speaking, but I continue it feels like a condensation of that kind of, you know how the whole hope movement came around with Obama? I just felt that was more like desperate. Like uh, Obama could have like, like, like fucking just executed a nun and then one would be like, oh, it's better than fucking Bush. And I feel that, that now we've reached the same kind of desperation point. I, mean, I actually, I like Obama, but the point I'm making is I feel that same desperation, that same kind of like, we can't go through another fucking eight years of someone like Bush just can't do that. But now it's like being condensed. Once they realize this crazy person could actually make it in, they're like, oh, not again. But I haven't actually seen anyone say that yet. I'm waiting for the person to be like, oh, dodged a bullet. Like, or of course saying GWB would be better. That's the one I'm waiting for. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, there, it's sort of implied, right? Like the, the idea that there are, mm, there are the good Republicans and the bad ones, which totally ignores that, okay, if the good Republicans were in charge before, that means that certain systemic problems that they uh, happily profited off of led the way to this. There is no A to B point in this thinking. It's it's binary without any movement or sense of time. No. And it's, it, but the, really my favorite thing of this whole election, if we really get down to <sighs> basics, is watching people on my feed, like people I really respect, people I think are genuinely intelligent, well-read people being like, not replying to Donald Trump, being like, you, sir, are a, like they're doing their little own little uh, 
West West Wing speech to Donald Trump. And what do they think? It's like the people who like tweet at celebrities asking for them to follow them. But worse, because it's it's like a little intellectual speech. It's like, are you, sir? What do you think of this, sir? It's like Donald Trump is not sitting there reading his tweets at all, most likely. But he's definitely not reading them being like, oh, that, that fucking Judd Legum's at it again. Yeah, Trump is not losing any sleep over Judd Legum. Uh, or like anyone else. People, people, no one is. No <laughs> one is. But uh, the... Uh, talk about a chauvinist viewpoint. People who exist in the liberal world think that everybody acts on their motivation, their same motivations. I mean, these people, these sort of like liberal media guys are probably more motivated by shame than anyone in the world outside of maybe ordained priests. But uh, they think because their driving animus and their beliefs and their lives is shame – that everyone else operates on the same thing. And that Trump, who is this disgusting fucking rapist prick who cheats people out of money and like brags about not paying taxes and screwing people over and deals and all this time, just you know, calls all legal immigrants rapists and says we need to ban Muslims like this. This guy, you're going to shame him. Yeah, he's not going to read. You have no idea how this works, do you? You have no idea how human beings operate. It's like if you if you got up in front of Trump somehow and like yelled like you're a big rapist over a megaphone, he'd probably turn around and be like, "Ah, oh, you're a piece of shit, Bob." Yeah, and then go home and like jack off. He wouldn't care. He like he's like he is. I don't even know what he is, but there is something quite the terrifying part to these people as well is that George Bush, when you had his gotchas, when you had the Mitt Romney gotchas, when you had the Matt McCain gotchas, they were always because they fumbled on policy or they did something shitty and you had this moment of satisfaction where you were like, ah, my intelligence has beaten your intelligence and I have found you. <laughs> like all great internet arguments. And yeah. yet with Trump, it's like, oh, I, I, I took a shit in a woman's mouth, but... And how do you respond to... Like, he, he's straight up. And this we were talking about this the other day. He has, like, done something truly fucking disgusting. He is, like, the disgusting things he said, I would almost be sure he's done. I mean, that's for sure. You got it, yeah. Got something, it. something has happened. And there's the, those reports, I believe them. But the fact that I'm seeing people being like, well, he's going to go to jail for this, or he's going to go, the, my favorite being, he's going to go to jail for tax evasion. That is, like, the... Holy shit. The ultimate, and it, that is... Across the board, shit. I'm see I'm seeing like rich venture capitalists say that, and I want to like piss myself laughing, but I can't urinate anymore. But it's seriously though, I've seen like really quite wealthy people say like he's gonna go to jail for tax evasion. It's like first of all, he didn't break any laws, and second of all, what? Since when does that happen to rich people? Ever? That never happens. It and uh. I mean, okay, so they do this one thing where Trump is like the bad type of Republican and they desperately need for this good type of Republican, this mythical moderate to exist. Well, there's the same thing with uh, Trump status as a rich guy because I, I got God, I saw some – I think it was Robert Reich go, Trump isn't a businessman. He's just a cheat who doesn't pay taxes and screws people out of money. Gee, I don't know. That sounds like every fucking businessman I know. That's all of them. It sounds, what do you think? They just like make some amazing thing that benefits society? No, they don't because that's not rewarded by the tax code or anything, any structural part of this country. What the fuck world are you living in? And the idea that he's going to go to prison. I mean, half the shit Trump does is shit that Hillary's biggest donors do anyway. Are they I'm, going to prison too? No, none of them are. This is uh, – it's a, it, it, these people try to have this critique of trusted product of it. He does everything he gets away with from sexual assault to tax evasion. Rich people are incentivized to get away with that shit. And they always do. And it's the easiest thing in the world. Like accountants are not there. Well, they're there to make sure you do your taxes right. But it's not like a tax guy is going to be like, ah, you know what? I could save you like a lot of money by doing this one thing. I'll leave it. That would be unethical. Bullshit. Fucking nothing. And like, and they, and these are the same people in many cases. Because dipping my head in the tech acid, these are the same fucking people who have done exactly the same shit for years. Like they are benefiting from the 
amazingly shitty ways that tech companies get around paying people based on the tax code. Like the literal growth of the tech industry that's based on making people contractors instead of employees <laughs> is a tax evasion. That's what it is. It's not like they it's just it's wonderful. It's the it's like this thing, it's like liberals are all good, and now you've got a few people who are like becoming liberals because of it. And it and it's brilliant. It's just, it's so beautiful watching them. It's amazing. I mean, these people who they are they are board members and stake owners in these companies that don't generate any revenue yet still somehow make money off of it. They're they're somehow yelling at Donald Trump for not paying taxes. Buddy, you're the entire thing you're operating on is just some fucking weird pyramid scheme that exists through market inequalities brought on by uh fiscal fiscal codes that were taken advantage of by big financial donors and historically low interest rates that hmm, guess who else those benefit no fucking room to talk and then you, then you also get these kind of people like Judd Legume I return to I don't know how you actually say his name but I assume it's Legume um his tweet from 3 hours ago is of course and this is the Ugh. election I will refer to now as the tweet storm election because that's all I fucking see But it's like, one, Trump has been accused by numerous women of sexual assault. Two, he's also been caught on tape bragging that he can get away with sexual assault. Three, his response to these allegations has been that these women are too ugly to sexually assault. Four, let that sink in. Five, then remember that tens of millions of Americans, including a majority of men, will vote for Trump to be the next president. Okay, I think we all knew that. Thanks, though. And if you actually... um, yeah, if you but if you follow more than ten people, you will have at least one with it. It's like a one in ten chance you're gonna have someone like that in there. And and what this election has brought out is the amazing armchair elect and to an extent it happened before. And but it really this election has brought out the armchair election people. And just what you're watching them do this thing where they're like trying to get their head around the fact that they all and they all kind of like laughed at Trump. Then he turned up and he's like serious now. And oh, Christ, he's there. And now they're all like, well, it's time to take a stand. Your tweets don't mean shit. Neither does your face. No one is reading, reading them. It's all this weird circle thing where you've got like. You've got like one, like you've just got all your followers are kind of voting the same way. If one of them doesn't support Hillary, they probably are not going to get changed by your tweet storm in which you're like, Trump is a rapist. Let that sink in. Yeah, I mean, we la- we laugh at that guy, Bill Mitchell, who the guy, the conservative guy who looks like racist Patrick Warburton, because he is hilariously deluded. Like, he just, he says stupid things all the time, and when yeah. people laugh at him, he's like, oh, yeah, well, I got five million impressions on my Twitter page, so I'm going to turn the election for Trump. And everyone laughs at that because that's ridiculous. But, uh, like, Judd Legume is doing the same thing. Like, he, there's the same thought process behind there. He's like, oh, I got eight million impressions. I am, I'm helping win this for Hillary. No, you're not. You're just providing jack-off material for people who already agree with you. Uh, the Judd Legume is my favorite, by the way, because so you remember when the birther thing was was going around earlier this year? Uh, Hillary didn't oh, start yes. the birther thing, but holy shit, did oh, she yeah. not help? Especially when her campaign was flagging in 2008. And uh, no. I mean, we kind of saw it in the emails that were released to release today how there was absolutely this emphasis from pollsters and people who work for the Clintons of. Uh, emphasizing Obama's foreign otherness. Uh, Judd Legume, who fucking was just yeah. like a low man on the totem pole in the Hillary campaign in 2008, went, I worked for Hillary in 2008. We didn't imply that. First of all, how the fuck would you know? Like, you, Judd, you are an editor for fucking Think Progress. Yeah. I think if you were at the rung of power where you would have decided general strategy as far as going after Obama, you would be in a little higher position than being on a liberal blog, you fucking moron. Yeah. You wouldn't be a think progress or whatever. They're, they're all the same. They all, they're all think blog. But what's amazing to these people, I think what plays into their sudden ego growth 
And you see it in people like Dana Schwartz. You see it in people like Jad Lagoon. You see it in yeah. also, and on the other side, you see it in the baseball crank. But you're seeing their growth because this is the easily the most. It's it is the probably the most talked about election that I've seen because there's so many fucking ways to talk about it, and people get so much out of like this weird masturbatory thing. But it's amazing. There's definitely this kind of. Em- it's a growth of their egos because people's natural reactions during an election, which isn't a stupid thing, or at least in theory it is, um, are like, all right, shit. It's kind of like when you need the sports scores, you go to ESPN. Okay, I need to know what the fuck's going on in the election. I'm going to go to whichever publication theoretically covers the election in the way I like it, because that's also step one. It's like, choose a side, then pick the publication. And so they're going to these people and they've watched, so they've watched it, Initially, they had their just their bump from the election, but I'm sure, and I'm basing this because this is scumbag, we don't do research, but I'm guessing they had a huge bump in following around this election as people got more desperate, because it's the same thing as worrying about there being another Bush situation. It's this kind of, this fear meant that they all came in. They all came in and they were like, oh, we need to go to the the experts like uh, Nate Silver Oh, shit. Uh, maybe not Nate Silver. Uh, Judd Lagoon. Oh, well, he's saying things that are very, very hard to disprove because they're also things already said by other people. And he's saying them in a very powerful sounding way. That's that's powerful. I'm going to retweet that. And so these people, and it's the, it's a feedback effect of these people get more retweets, so they think they're more interesting, so they do more of these fucking things, like Donald Trump, is a tax evader, and Donald Trump, the less woman. Think about it. And it's, you. of course, it's going to get a bunch of retweets from people who, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, in fact, it's good that people are spreading that message, people should know, but it's not like they're spreading it to people who don't. Yeah, I mean, look. In fact, quite the opposite. Donald Trump is absolutely going to lose. He is going to lose for many reasons. He is going to lose because he has alienated women since he announced his campaign and sort of got off, uh, you know, the first big moment of his campaign after calling Mexicans rapists was uh, making fun of Megyn Kelly for having her period. Uh, and he will further has lost women because he is a, a, a rapist. Um he will lose because uh, he is going after a demographic of people that is being eaten by other demographics. He will lose for many, many, many reasons. He will not lose because of the media. The media has been very aligned against him, which I don't think you can criticize them all that much for. But the media is as incompetent as we have always said it was, and they're going to get the idea that their complete alignment against Trump is what caused them to lose. They're going to think that they defeated racism, which is fucking hilarious. Uh, People hate the media more than they hate Trump, and if the media affected this election as much as they like to think they do, Trump would be down by 40 points right now. It wouldn't be you know, a six, seven point race. Well, I think what they don't want want to admit, though, is that, yeah, if they did affect it in any way, it's the way they don't want to like, which is when they didn't think Donald Trump was serious, every fucking person, and I was guilty of it, sure, but a lot of these sneering media types on both sides were like, yeah, look at the funny Trump thing now, me. Oh, he, he's talking about small hands. Yeah, he's never going to make it. And he absolutely did, and they all realized they'd kind of fed that. They fed that monster. Well, yeah, no, they really thought they were getting him by putting him in in entertainment. I thought Donald Trump was going to win from the day he announced because he was the one guy that would actually stick to the things that get Republican voters out of the House, which is racial animus. Uh, Yeah. Ah, God, I feel I would almost feel bad for these Republican Party uh, welfare think tank guys who really think that these people are voting for free me- free market economics all these years. Uh, but uh, it makes you kind of worried for 2020, though, doesn't it? When there is oh, yeah. going to be somebody who is far less stupid, has far less skeletons in the closet than Donald Trump. They come out, they clean up his act a little bit. Four years of Clinton, 
there's absolutely going to be an economic downturn just looking at what has to happen with the interest rates alone. Uh, the ACA is falling apart because it's a piece of shit. There might be yep. massive, my, my massive... My plan went up 23%. Yeah, yeah. It's compl- I'm probably not even going to buy uh, insurance because you actually, they do not enforce you paying the Obamacare tax. Uh, so I... Little nice. little note to everybody. That's great news. Little note, everybody uh, wondering about that. You don't actually have to pay it. But uh, more unrest in the world as the Saudis killed hundreds in a triple strike, triple tap strike in Sanaa, Yemen, and we're heavily involved. And Hillary wants regime change in Syria. Uh, the world is going to be half on fire after four years. And anyone who is ten percent less dumb than Trump will probably win. Uh, and the media is going to try the same shit they did in 2016. And holy shit, I think that's all they have. That is all they have. And holy shit, is it not going to be enough? And I've, and I've actually, on, on Twitter, I will not engage anyone in a conversation about this. Like I, or at least I try and avoid it. But I'm seeing people just, and I, I consider myself one of the, in this category of out of their league. Like, unless it's something that I know, I'm not going to approach it. Or at least I'm not going to approach it for more than like a tweet. But like I am seeing people, I'm seeing people comment on situations with a degree of complexity they shouldn't. Like people talking about tax in general. Like I've seen at least 15 people in the past, let's say two weeks, talk about. Oh uh, God, has it been that? How however long it's been since that New York Times story? It's probably like yesterday, and it's just everything feels so long. But everyone's like suddenly an amateur accountant now. It's like tax evasion. That's what he did. No, he manipulated it. Don't want to admit it because that's, that would be a bigger fucking deal to deal with. And people are like Brexit, Zulibur, racism. And you know, uh, Britain's going down the toilet. Britain's already, they are fucking in the water. The pound is like a dollar 22. Now that is a scary fucking sign that, very few people want to talk about because that is a huge economic worry. That is the kind of shit that will cause a global recession. But no, it's definitely about um, Trump and like whatever. Like it's it's definitely the fact that Hillary is going to change everything. She's going to come in. The world's going to fix itself magically. Definitely, the Brexit's not going to happen, even though it's absolutely going to happen. And basically, the Brexit's going to happen and. By the looks of it, and this is off my own stupid knowledge, and I realize I've trapped myself in a conversation about politics for an hour and a half, but it's looking like it's just going to shit all over the world. And everyone's going to, like, like, Clinton will probably be like a like a kind of a Republican, I guess, from what I understand they look like. And it's like, and it's just like, and these people don't realize it. And they're like, I'm with her. I'm with her. Is he with her? Are you with her? I think Taylor Swift needs to be with her. It's like, why does Taylor Swift? That's the best one. That's the best one. It, apart from like all of the Ken Bone stuff. And by the way, if Ken Bone comes back from this whole sex thing, like his like sexual thing and his horrible, like, I don't know. I can't remember. Is it felony tax evasion or something like that? Oh no, it's felony insurance fraud. And I guarantee, like it, I will put like 50 bucks down. I'll donate to charity if this doesn't happen. Ah, Ken Bone's definitely going to be with her. That's going to be the thing. If that happens, that is going to be the most erect that the liberal media will be until Trump loses. And then they will have a bonus so hard, it will like knock a glass off the table. You have an interesting point with tax evasion. Uh, they don't want it to... It's more attractive for them to say that Donald Trump committed tax evasion illegally then the truth is which everything he did was in this case legal because if you say that you have to admit that the system is pretty fucked it's Completely. pretty fucked to allow that and uh, people really are not want to uh level systemic critiques it never seems to be the right time for them uh people will who are sympathetic will go i am sympathetic to this viewpoint but now is not the time uh, you'll wait a year from now. Well, it's the first year of the Clinton presidency. She's trying to enact her agenda of what? I don't know, but she's trying to enact it. Now is not the time. A year after that, this is a midterm election. Now is not the time. A year after that, it's a year before the presidential 
uh, re-election campaign. People will now decide. The time. It's never the time. No. It's never the time for people because they don't want to look at it. They don't want to. They don't want to uh, examine the system that they pretty much completely benefit from. Yeah. That these talentless people who are only in their positions because they follow any number of rules, they don't want the rules of the system to be questioned because they are completely gormless, uninteresting fucks and they get to make a nice upper middle class living uh, just by their knowledge of the rules of this existing, the confines of the system. And it's it's really weird as well how this it, it's it, it's bringing up these issues that people discuss just like every political campaign for like two seconds each and it's great because this election has really allowed everyone to go into their full scale political neuroses mode which means they go through okay women's rights racism police ah uh, crap uh tax great cool what are my opinions and no one's okay with just being like and I'm proud to say like I am ignorant on many thousands of subjects. These people, they, it's like, um, let me tell you my own personal story about this. My racist uncle, Jed Fuck, he once said that black people all steal. And I turned to him and I said, Jed, there's a reason. There's a reason we called you Jed Fuck, which is one name. And it's because you are a fuck. And everyone clapped. Everyone just clapped because my family are all good liberals, apart from my racist uncle. Everyone got a racist uncle as well somewhere. <laughs> Like, he pops up every four years to vote. Yeah, no, it just seems like America is mostly racist uncles. Uh, that everybody clapped egg. I don't know what that is. That is some bizarre internet pathology. I think it started on something awful whenever it was, like, a pretty uh, subtly racist story about a IT guy shutting down a black guy who was talking during a movie, <laughs> uh, which obviously did not happen. No. And especially the part about everyone in the theater clapping did not happen. But that's sort of like a hallmark of reclusive internet morons. But I guess it's, it's extended to the liberal, liberal class. I used to think it was just a nerdy thing. I yeah. guess it's a liberal thing. Well, the first time I ever remember it was that one, the one that went around from Facebook, where it was like, there was like an eight, there was, it was very specifically like a Chinese woman who was being harassed on a train, I think. And, like, someone stood up and was like, duh, stop being a racist to the racist man. And everyone was like, yeah, well done, not being racist. And it was like, they, but all of them are, like, fucking four paragraphs long, way more detailed than you'd remember. And it's, no one, Yeah, and no one has four, like, the, your average person does not have four paragraphs of shit in them at any given moment. And no moment like that really has that much. Also, they're always in New York, which is one of my favorite things. Because if, like, that racist thing happened, what would actually happen would be, like, hey, go back to your own country. No, wait. Okay. And everyone would, like, shuffle around uncomfortably. They'd, like, turn their headphones up. Maybe one guy would be like, oh, shut up, asshole. He'd be like, oh, fuck you. And then nobody would do anything. No, yeah, it would just be people, like, mumble yelling at each other. Nothing would happen because, like, nothing ever actually happens. But it's like the internet, you, you're onto something, though, with the clapping. It seems like the internet tough guy routine has now been transferred to people's discussion of politics. Because you'll see people who are like, like I, I, what, this, I forget which one of the many political people I followed. And I was like, it, he was talking last night and he's always, maybe Weinstein or something like that. They all blend into like one amorphous blob of white guy arguing but it's always like they're arguing with a guy called like chad 4725 and he's got like a picture of an american flag and his like dog and he's always like oh, trump is the best choice for america and this media elite guy is like well actually i think you'll find historically and they get into these really like shitty arguments and like the other guy has learned like three things from a wikipedia page and i don't and and I can understand doing it once. Everyone gets drawn into a fucking stupid argument online. But this is amazing. It happens so much. There are so many of these political columnists who just can't help themselves. They can't. All day. All day. All day just arguing with people who, like, have just completely rejected their version of the world and they figure they're going to logic them back into it. 
Or if they don't think that, they think that they somehow, like, look cool doing this. They look cool having a logic debate with fucking deplorable Donna or whatever. <laughs> but it's, it, but that's where the Internet Tough Guy part comes in, I think. It really is this amazing... It, it's kind of like flexing for your fans, like, Ch- check this fuckwood out. Because they'll have, like, a back and forth for, like, five or six tweets, and then they'll quote tweet them. They'll be like, Dud, look at this dipshit. Or they'll do the period before the before their name so that everyone can see how smart they're being. That one, oh my God. I saw somebody dot at Ken Bone today. It was so good. Oh. Uh, but I also, um, no, those ones, those ones are good for a number of reasons. Uh, I like them. I like them because they don't realize that they've been doing this for 18 hours a day, more or less. <laughs> At which point it stops to become, if you spend like over three hours in a day arguing with like people who have completely made up their mind and think you're an asshole, you're the asshole. They actually kind of have a point about what a fucking asshole you are. Yeah. And it's, it's fantastic as well because it's the same kind of shit they would turn around and say like, well, back with Bernie Sanders, like, Bernie bros in my mentions, but there's got this weird, like, and I'm guilty of it. I've done it where I've, like, quote-tweeted someone being mean, and on some level I kind of want someone to respond and be like, fuck you, it's a cool guy. But they do it all the time. It's like a dedicated routine. And I don't think they're consciously doing it. And it's not just... It's not just media people now, because the, I guess there are people who do genuinely search the word, like, Trump... And like, oh my god! And like, try, like start arguments, and it's amazing. And like, there's there's actually like some people I really like who do it. And like, there's the guy who runs. I'm not going to name him, but a guy who runs a specific account that got famous because it tweeted at Donald Trump every day, and now he like constantly is tweeting people arguing with his bot. And it's like, dude. No, like, that doesn't make you smart. It makes them, like, they're probably not online, like, 15 hours a day, like all of us. So, they probably don't... I was online all day because I was waiting for a, a package. Oh, okay. I, I mean... I don't normally do that all the time. Yeah, I, I'm only online, like, 18 to 20 hours a day, which I think is healthy. But the, Normal amount? Yeah, it's the, you gotta get shit done, such as replying constantly to every fucking person. But it's amazing, though. Yeah, you gotta get those quote tweets in. But it's, it's like they, there is a certain groundhog effect where they come out every four years and they go and do it. But I, I think there's a desperation here. I, it, even though they really know Donald Trump is going to fail, maybe they're now changing their tactic to how can I come out of this looking like I was responsible, like you said, for making sure that Hillary Clinton won. But you're seeing so many people, like people in video games, the like video game developers. Uh, who I will not specifically call out, but the ones who go like, okay, I want to talk about growing up in the South and my experience of conservatives. And it's always oh negative. Oh, God. I love those. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest. Oh, I've my met God. many pleasant conservatives, just as I've met many unpleasant conservatives. And in fact, many is the wrong word. Like, five. I've met, like... Like I, uh, people who, because people don't genuinely wa- generally walk around with like their identity politics, like dunk, just conservative tattooed on their fucking head. But so yeah, most have people met, have other life experiences and things about them and interests that differentiate yeah. them from these guys. And it's like, but I mean, I've met plenty of and had plenty of perfectly nice conversations with conservative people who genuinely believe that. There is some sort of problem with black people. And I've been like, that's fucking stupid. I've just been like, it's stupid, your beliefs. As you've been like, okay, well, that's my political belief. And it's like this weird, uncomfortable silence of, oh, yep, that's how it works. Not going to change your mind. It's not like I'm going to say to you. Like, in real life, if these conversations occurred in the way they thought they would, it would either end with a very uncomfortable silence, as it always has with me. And genuinely... Most conservatives have, are like, really, like, right, the, the proper fucking ultra-conservative people I've met haven't gone all in immediately with racism. Like, it's not like you meet them and they're like, hey, ban black people. It's usually like they, they think that there should be no taxes or something like that. 
And it's just a conversation and you don't agree with each other and you walk away. Unlike Twitter where it's like there's no end point until someone gets blocked. And then they post the screenshot of them blocking them. Yeah, there is like a tough guyism to it though because I one of my I have a lot of favorite memories from this year. This primary uh, just sort of confirmed everything I always suspected about media people that they are neurotic disasters. Uh, just so many great things I saw. One of my favorite things was this reporter is like, uh, I got death threats from uh, you know fucking who I don't think he's like Bernie people or Trump people. I don't even remember, but. Uh, this uh, middle aged guy, this like horny middle aged reporter <laughs> pundit guy, replies to her and goes, Forward them to me. <laughs> Forward the death threats to me. What the fuck are you gonna do? Are you, are you, oh, are you gonna kill them? It's time. To- oh, fucking senior, senior reporter, p- podcast guy, at fucking Politico. You're gonna do something. You're gonna you're gonna track their IPs and what? Fucking you're gonna just go to their house with a gun? Shut the fuck up. You're not gonna do anything. You'll know you're gonna, you're gonna write a blistering reply and screenshot and get forty favorites. Fuck you. Yeah, it's just there's no Fuck gonna... all of them. Holy shit, what a bunch of fucking morons. Like they they're not just afraid of everything all the time. Like they're gonna confront all the evils of the world. Fuck you. Like most people, me included, if someone was like in real life, like I'm gonna fucking stab you to death, I'd be like, shit, no, I don't want that. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. No, thank you. It's just like fuck. <laughs> no, thank you. Be horrible. Like, I, I genuinely <laughs> don't. Suck. But then you've got like Kurt. Like, so we Kurt Eichenwald, who I just learned about thanks to you, who is a oh, great he rules. I love Kurt. Great, great possible. Like actually, did Peter pedophile things like paid for child pornography like straight up did it like that's a that's a thing that happened it was in either a deposition or a court case or both i don't know but nevertheless this guy went off on one and what was i don't know if the person deleted their account and someone else found it but to give a felix you can dig more into the actual story but basically someone like threatened his kids i'm guessing they just tweeted him like oh, i'm gonna punch your kid in the face he's like that's it I'm gonna get my fuck. I'm gonna find you. Maybe. Yeah, well, what happened was, well, Kurt. I I don't know what it is with people named Kurt online. I think there's just some sort of. They're amazing. Yeah, they rule. They're the best people online. Uh, so Kurt Eichenwald, his he wrote Newsweek. Honestly, should have taken down the post he wrote because it was riddled with so many errors. He implied that the Russian government hacked his personal email to give information to Donald Trump, which. Just amazing, just to be like, Putin Putin is sitting there like, we need to go after Kurt Eichenwald. <laughs> I love that as well. That's what it, you're seeing this a few times, but it's like, and they always talk down to the conservatives about feeling like this, but it's exactly the same thing. It's like, ah, oh, yes, we shall get him. Ah, oh, we have found Kurt. We the- it's the same thing. It's the same thing as the conservatives who think that ICE is going to target them. They live in Oklahoma. And if they take but- that, a, pick of their, a pick of their Glock. ISIS is like, <laughs> Al Baghdadi is going to be like, oh shit, that guy. Oh, no, can't go after fucking Rifle Jeff 1962. <laughs> but, uh, so Kurt, you know, he just acts like an asshole all the time. Uh, and people, you know, for more lefty people are arguing with him because he's agitating with sort of Cold War bullshit. Look, no one's a fan of Russia. I think Putin's a piece of shit. I, but I don't want further diplomatic tensions with him. Because they have the world's biggest nuclear arsenal, and I don't want to play a geopolitical game of proxy wars over this. I don't care. But anyway, Kurt, people met, you know, say to Kurt to screw with him because he's an egomaniacal asshole. Uh, I'm going to email your wife, Kurt. You know, famous Twitter taunt. And because Kurt always, his head always goes to 11, he takes and says, Oh, the Russians are threatening my wife. And so. Glenn Greenwald. You know, but, yeah, Glenn Greenwald is threatening. Glenn Greenwald has instructed these people to email his wife, I guess, uh, according to Kurt. And Kurt <laughs> never wanted to back down. It's, it's like the movie Never Back Down, which was also about a stupid child, uh, <laughs> similar to Kurt Eichenwald. Uh, he, he says, I ruin people for a living. <laughs> Are you fucking Liam Neeson? Shut up. You're a fat old reporter who can't even get his story straight. <laughs> you went to Newsweek because you spent two grand on a child porn website to make yourself the center of a story. Fuck you. <laughs> and All it, of them. 
And it's great as well because, like, it and these people are uh, to your own Twitter handle. I wonder if this is the election that brought about by your logic. You've proven my point because I've never it seen brought it. it back. Definitely, it's a beautiful because that's exactly what every response from these and the and what's great. And we've always said it: the billion colonists have the easiest job in the world. They really do, and. It always brings them out the woodwork when something weird is happening and they always have to have a fucking say. And Newsweek, which by the way, like cut like so many people. It fired so many fucking people. And now you're going to watch the media like Rolling Stones fucking firing people, all sorts of like the Guardians fucking firing. All these great reporters are being fired. The bubble is bursting. Yeah. And but it's all going great, to hell. But no, don't worry. Kurt still has a fucking job. Yeah. This like, fucking weird moron with an obvious personality disorder who can't even keep facts straight. Well, yeah, no, this is the type of guy who gets rewarded. I, I hope he runs Newsweek in the future. I hope Newsweek uses its corporate credit to pay for child porn websites. <laughs> yeah, that's... And that's the thing, though. No one seems to be... I, they, if you want a an actual legitimate thing to bring up in this election would be someone who has written about a great deal of things about morality within this election and within elections past, literally paid for child pornography. He Pete Townsend did, and he fucking, like, did it. That's an investigation. That is what Vice should be. They should have a report of Vice, or I don't know why I'm picking on Vice specifically. Someone should be running a fucking story on that. They should be like, hey, remember this shit? Like, this is bad. Like, this is... Because there is a... There is genuinely... It only helps. Try- yeah, you know what? It's not the right time. It's not the right time to go after Kurt Eichenwald, who's single-handedly winning the election for Hillary. Oh my and God! And- the way the way he acts, like people, are, like undecided voters, are reading his stories. No one reads Newsweek. Fuck off. And undecided voters, I don't know if there's any research behind them, what they generally do. But if you're undecided at this point, I can imagine you just not voting. Yeah, probably not. Yes, probably, these probably not. won't go. You got some like shit going on but what's really funny as well is this election is making people and going back to Ken Bohm because it's great because it's a it is inherently a thing created by and promoted by the internet it is a it is the most scumbag thing to happen in real life beyond him actually looking like Carl Diggler which was just wonderful and I felt that, that this is this is literally giving a shout out to the person I'm talking to but that that whole thing with Carl Diggler drinking two liters of water and eating 10 spoonfuls of salt to hide himself. That little joke that you made was exactly what it is. He was like, to hide himself from Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, who would of course know who he was. That's exactly what it is. It's that kind of pathology. Yeah, I mean, Carl is only like a little bit more exaggerated in how egomaniacal he is and how important he thinks the media is than Kurt Eichenwald. Certainly a better person than Kurt Eichenwald. Holy shit. And, but the Ken Bone thing has been brilliant because you're watching these people, and I got to see a lot of tech people, like, run at full speed with an erection about they have, like, a viral star that they can then put in fucking AMAs and, like, have fun with and do memes about and then run their erection directly into a brick wall. Because it is amazing watching, like, the AMA at Reddit and watching all these fucking tech people... Being like, oh, yeah, time for Ken Bone to come out and do his AMA. And, oh, he likes Radiohead, just like me. As people were finding this terrible shit about him. And it's like, of course he was going to have that terrible shit. But what, what it is, is that it's this, like, desperation. Really, I, I've, I don't follow a bunch of conservatives, so I can't fairly comment on that. I'd be curious as to whether there are quite that many conservatives making fun of the dude, other than I respect the ones who just go, duh, fat, duh, because that is more intelligent than half this fucking up your ass virality criticism. But watching people like retract, like, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remove it, Ken Bone stuff is amazing because they wanted it to be like, oh, yeah, this is the, this is the fun part of the election. Now we know the bad man, Trump, is gone. Now we know he's gone. Now we can all sit back and have a laugh. This is the guy we need. And that, that shit. If I fucking hit, I want to blow my brains out every time I fucking hear. Isn't X isn't the thing we deserve. It's not the thing we want or need. It's what we deserve. 
It's like this, like Ken Bone is the thing we need and deserve. It's like, yeah, you know what? He fucking is. He is a weird dude that you have isolated that then takes advantage of you and then makes fun of you by taking a bunch of money. And then you find out he's a huge piece of shit. You all fell for it. None of you looked up that shit on day one. Now, how you would have found his Reddit profile, I don't know, but it's one of those things where it's like, you know what? There are people who play Destiny who were able to work out binary codes to unlock guns. How did nobody find it out? He like, I don't know. I don't care about his weird pornography things. Yeah, the insurance fraud's kind of shitty and the horrible racism's the fucking worst. No one wanted to find that quickly though. People wanted a bit of time to have fun, to all act like they were all superior, and then they got their dick stuck in the door. It was amazing. It was amazing watching these people just do this shit. Like, I don't... I I just... It really was... It's a beautiful thing to go viral in the election, to see the, the kind of, oh, we're all just having a laugh, but the kind of liberal sneer... And then the immediate just crack a pow of, oh no, he's definitely a conservative. And now everyone's saying what you said, and I actually believe you, where it's like, oh, I mean, he was undecided, so he obviously voted Trump. I mean, I knew all along. I mean, I made like 15 tweets, and I bought the sexy Cambone shirt, and I bought the t-shirt, and I retweeted the Uber thing. But like, I knew. I was, it, was, it was all a, a goof and a spoof. Oh yeah, well, this entire election for me has been making broad generalizations about people and then watching them slowly become true. Uh, Ken Bone, uh, there's a little bit of, uh, the Donald Trump narrative in there, though, isn't there? Uh, Donald Trump starts out as this fun, goofy character, and we go, he's gonna win the whole, the whole primary, you know that, right? They go, huge, the wall, haha. And, uh, now, after these morons finally got that idea, probably in, what, uh, May of this year, after every pathetic attempt to try to stop him, they forget that Donald Trump was even favored to win earlier last month. Uh, You know, it finally comes out that, of course, he's committed gross sexual assaults. And uh, they did not think to look this up. None of the media people thought to look this up. None of the Republican, the brilliant never Trump opposition thought to look any of this up during the primary. Uh, manifold. And just they, acting very smugly as if the rapists didn't assemble to beat all of them just very easily. And on top of that as well, I'm loving the fact that like, and it's a joke that I will regularly make because it's like, this is the one, this is what nails him. But they've been saying, they've said it like 15 times. I, my fear was that frankly, I was surprised the, the raping thing is actually going to work to stop him. Because he's done all of these horrible things, and I don't believe it's his body of work that has got him to lose. I think it's just, this has touched a particular vein, and the other stuff is kind of bad. But it's not like all these, and I've also seen, oh god, I'm loving the liberal people who are like retweeting Republic, like the worst Republicans. Like the, like, yeah. like fucking John oh McCain. And they're like kind of suggesting he's okay. But it's like John, yeah, McCain. John, John McCain, John McCain, who happily funds militias in Syria, who behead 14 year old Palestinian children. Yeah, he's this like fucking ghoul. I cannot wait for John McCain to die and all these liberals <laughs> to cry co- crocodile tears like this fucking reptilian was oh, just a murderous cocksucker till the day he died. Oh, like Felix, he was any better than Trump. Felix, don't worry. This guy who fucking divorced his wife after she got in a car accident. This fuck, he's just as bad. He's just as bad. He's, he's just how to charm he's liberals smart. and gormless people in the world. Yeah. He's smart. He just wasn't a good presidential candidate. He's fucking terrible. He's horrible. Like his state like desperately wanted a law where it was like you could just stop anyone looking vaguely foreign and be like, hey, you, show me your papers. Like they wanted that. Like and and straight up, everyone's like retweeting him like, yep. And they're trying to say on some level, oh, I'm just doing it to show that Trump's falling apart. No, no, they're falling for the same shit. They're kind of redeeming him. But don't worry, because my theory is that when Trump truly goes down the shitter, and I will not believe that's happened until it's done, it's going to be a case of everyone is going to flip on these Republicans and be like, yep, you fucking cowards. Like three months after it happened. Miss the miss the boat, but they'll be like, here's the Republicans who are cowards. 
And it's like, oh, God. And, and I love the people posting the lists of Republicans who didn't denounce Trump. It's like, wow, yeah, that's bad. But you realize the ones that did still supported him when he was like, ban Muslims. Yeah, and they don't. Yeah, they they didn't. Do you think they they're denouncing him because they hate sexual assault? No, Republicans don't care about sexual assault. They happily defund Planned Parenthood, which sets up clinics for women to get rape kits and counseling after sexual assaults. They did it because they were looking for a stop to get off at because they knew Trump would lose. They are more afraid of losing their relevance, which would be to be clinging to Trump as he loses than they are of any principles they may have. Oh, God, But no. you can really just sell – liberals so badly want to believe in this sort of moral world that doesn't really exist that you can just sell them anything. And it's even the ones who aren't quite – the more – I've had to learn new terms like centrist, did not believe – I do not believe it meant what I mean. The people in the middle – uh, the, or leaning towards conservative, but the ones, the conservatives who don't believe, like, don't allow women to get abortions and also keep them in the kitchen. Like, those, like, the, the, like, there's a few of them popping up in my feed who are like, well, I wouldn't usually vote for Hillary, but this election is about more than that. And it's like, well done. You fucking took a stand. I mean, you didn't take a stand against the people who, like, straight up want to rip the homeless camps from San Francisco. And like the people who want to like set fire to the homeless here, like you don't, you didn't vote against that. You haven't done anything against the people who are just pointing at San Francisco here. The people who are legitimately saying, let's not build more. Like, it's not even about let's build more affordable housing. Let's not make buildings any taller so that we can't fix this issue. Like the people stopping that, like the people who genuinely are fucking shit up. Oh, wait, some of those are Democrats. Oh, fuck. Now you've got to deal with way more than just black and white shit. You have to deal with your own party's problems. Which was funny also watching the people go back and forth about Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. Just watching people's politics flip-flop and like watching the few people who are like, I'm going to vote Jill Stein now for whatever reason because I don't like Hillary. And it's like, and then well, people people think their votes are holy and important, especially centrists. Yeah, there were, d- d- centrists have yet to discover that there really are not as many of them as they oh. think there are. Because you have to be kind of a fucking freak to be a centrist. I'm sorry, but you do. Like a dedicated centrist on every issue. There's something wrong with your brain. I'm sorry. There is. There is. Uh, Less wrong with a dedicated conservative than there is a dedicated centrist. A dedicated centrist is this disgusting type of creature that only exists in, like, the Beltway or Manhattan. They're not real. There are people who generally are centrist, who are generally moderate and have right positions on some things and left positions on others, or moderate positions on some things and right positions on others, or moderate positions with left positions and other things, but someone who is a dedicated centrist, as these people identify, there are like a thousand of those people in America. They're really, there's not that much of a mandate for that. And it's like, it's, it's this, it's, what's going to be interesting to me is what happens in like six months. So we've got past the inauguration of, I assume, Hillary Clinton. Are people going to give as much shit, as many shits about black people getting shot with the police? Are they going to care that much about women's rights? Are they going to care that much about um, rape? Are they going to give that much? I have to wonder if this election is not just a very convenient time for people to give a shit about issues so they can see get into a general conversation. Because that's what it feels like. That's where the internet pathology is coming in because it's like people are discussing the election based on like one issue. They haven't read up on the, and it would, which is fair. I understand most people could not put, in, in fact, it's deeply unfair to actually ask someone on some level to understand every issue and make a fair vote. You kind of go off what you see and like try and work it out from there. Like it's like the election is inherently weighted against the people who, who like, most people do not have the time, nor are they adequ- nor do they have things adequately explained to them. Certainly not online. And it's just, it, it, it's just, 
So you're, but I really do wonder if people will give a shit about these issues once the election goes past, once the bad boy Trump is gone. No, hell no, they won't. And uh, one guy that I identified at the start of this cycle, uh, a guy who I said who is like a really big uh, Clinton booster, he reviewed children's movies, you know, like superhero movies for a living, uh, and he yeah. had suddenly, suddenly become a big feminist. And I remember saying. This guy, I bet this guy can't wait till after Hillary wins and he can stop being a feminist. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess he did not have to wait that long because it turned out this guy had sexually assaulted somebody. And the way that we found that out was that he was condemning Trump for his sexual assaults. It turned out not only did he assault somebody, as Trump did, he did the exact thing that Trump did. He couldn't even just keep his fucking mouth shut, but... Anyway, uh, presumably, wherever that guy's going, I don't know if he's left his apartment in this time, hopefully not, uh, he does not no longer jail. have to pretend... He's not going to jail, yeah. No. Even even this fucking pathetic oaf has enough privilege in this society that he's probably not going to go to jail. But uh, he uh, he can stop being, pretending to be a feminist, but uh, yeah, holy shit, if that does not confirm that it's an act for a lot of people... I, this fucking rapist who is lecturing every leftist about how they're a sexist. And that was my favorite thing to do as well. And that guy was like the mother load of sweeties. He oh was, my God. He was like in size and content. Yeah. And Folks, he, I'm calling him fat. <laughs> what? He's a man of gravity. And he, yeah. but he was, he was like the mother sweetie, like, like, like the, the, the kind of Cro-Magnum sweetie, except he was less honest, which I, I despise <laughs> that guy Ishmael. By the way, is still going. He is still tweeting at Taylor Swift, Moi, sweetie, like every day. Multiple he's times. the best. He's everything that. Well, okay. He, he, yeah, so I'm talking about Devin. He's everything Devin wishes that he was. Yeah, and it, but one thing I did that day because I I kind of thanks to this podcast and thanks to listening to Chapo and just generally being incredibly cynical about anything I see now, online specifically. I went and I just went, okay, they're decrying that Trump said pussy. Search name, pussy. Oh, there it is. Found it. Post. And there were people legitimately responding with, they were responding with, uh, that wasn't in private. And they, and I was like, like, Lamau, like thinking that they were joking. They're like, no, it wasn't fucking private. It's not the same thing. It's like, what the what is fucking wrong? Do you understand what was wrong about that situation? If like tr <laughs> if Trump had come out at like a, like an event and be like I put my hand and her pussy, like would that have been okay to you? But there were like f for each one there were maybe like two or three people, which I realize is not a majority of people, but it's enough to make you one wonder a bit, like wonder what they're actually like, what they're about here. What what do they really care about? And then you had and I'm not going to name the guy. But this, this a specific journalist who has a history of being a bit creepy. He went, uh, he went on his usual, his usual rant, which happens anytime anything happens to women ever. And God willing, some of these guys just fucking stop talking about feminism because it makes me want to fucking vomit because they, they don't care. But this guy has also been super creepy. There's some dodgy shit about him. And he went on this big rant about how, and he basically not all meant the situation and just saying like, this guy is not demonstrative of how men are, but you know, a lot of men have to consider a lot of things. And someone responded to him and said, hey, um, a woman responded to him and said, yeah, this doesn't really seem like your thing to discuss. Seems like a problem for like how women are treated. He blocks her just straight up, just immediately. And he's like, people are sea lying sea lioning my mentions and uh, I'd like to discuss that which got like another like seven tweets I and there's so many of them popping up on this election because the idea of a female president is like a bit horny I guess I guess they're a bit horny oh, I think liberals like the idea of being dominated <laughs> yeah that's that's it it's a, it's a bit a bit of a dom relationship there as well but it's also like there is it's going back to the creepy guys of online that a lot of these people, uh, these horrible men are like, oh, female president, fuck, if I back her, I can really cover up my shit. 
I can really be a good ally. I can be the ally that they've always wanted. <laughs> well, our our culture here in America is quite influenced by Calvinism. But the other part, I think liberalism is very influenced by uh, medieval Catholicism <laughs> in that, holy shit, uh, people really want to buy indulgences to get into heaven to, uh, you know. Oh my God, that's uh, it. Buy, buy away the other part of their sins, which is just, you know, I don't know, getting drunk and tweeting hey at every female reporter half your age or <laughs> in, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, actual sex crimes. Uh but wait, is, yeah, there a t- guess... is there a term for this? Because I think this is actually, this applies to way more than just the horrible, greasy guys. I guess you could call it like, what, you'd call it an indulgence liberal? Yeah. Well, but not just that. That's the a idea, new thing. The, the, the people who would buy their way into heaven in like feudal times, they'd like pay the Pope and way past feudal times, I guess. But they pay the Pope money or they pay the church money, tithes or what have you, to like, basically clean their souls and i feel like the new version of that is not just these guys who are like up ah, female president time to support it time that i support woman oh not not woman in congress though like uh the the ruth bane against whoever she is notorious rbg epic for a woman epic bacon rpg uh, but that, that's an epic that, bacon liberals epic bacon liberals but it's there is a real like this election has also been a great deal of a, a great deal of people like buying their way into heaven by jumping on issues like is it white people who are suddenly really fucking learned about a very small piece of black culture is it guys who are suddenly incredibly supportive of women's rights don't worry that shit goes right off in like 25 days all of this like they suddenly care about tax no, they don't fucking care. Even if they're upper middle class, they don't care. That's a lot of caring you have to do. If you actually really want to change some of this shit, you're going to have to like think about it and read about it. You're going to have to like do something. But a lot of these things, they are really, it's like, I'm going to marry myself to feminism. Great. That one, that'll make me look good. This will clean up my sins or this will make me a good person. It's, it is, it is a weird comparison, but it, it fits. It fits very well and it makes and it explains perhaps it's not buying their way into heaven, but it's certainly like cleansing their souls or making them a, a quote unquote good person by caring about if it's it from the very simplest level of being anti Trump. And that's and it's you could even apply it on a greater political system. I I imagine there is a certain there's definitely gonna be one of these these conservatives, these horrible GOP people who are gonna say like this is God's thing. Like this is God's will. Like I couldn't as a, as a man under God, cause it's definitely going to be a dude who says it. And it's going to be this thing where it's like, they are not voting for Trump, but they're not supporting Trump because you know, that's not what God would want. And I think even Arnold Schwarzenegger already went there. So it's like, Arnold, who did the exact things that Trump thing, like exact, exact. Didn't he have sex with his maid, then claim it wasn't actually his kid, and then you saw the kid, and it just looked like he, you shrunk it Arnold Schwarzenegger? exactly like Arnold, yeah. And he was like a ton he, of women. And he, yeah, and he's, he like has a history, but that's not important. We have an election. And that's the, it's, it's, you don't want to, like, rip on, I didn't see anyone rip on him for that, even though he straight up, like, tried to deny it. Like, and, and his kid is, like, also, like, thir- he was, like, 13 years old and, like, could bench four thousand pounds and like it's not it is not mine it's just like it's a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, but he's like horrible as well also everyone's like donald trump he's gonna get ri- this is it this is it for him this is it he's gonna get done for this uh this uh mol- molestation thing yeah like bill cosby no, didn't that, r- yeah, what bill happened Clinton to- didn't what about bill cosby though remember that one when everyone was like, that, there was that horrible liberal moment where they had to make dislike a black person publicly. Oh, cool. No, they, they, we have like 70. That was traumatic for conservatives, too, because Bill Cosby was always like the w- one black guy they could point to and be like, uh, see, that's the pull up your pants black guy. Uh, and, and the one they could pay as well. And, yeah, uh, but he's disappeared. What fucking happened yeah. to him? Last mention I saw I of him was when. Start, the rich people's trials have a habit of dragging on or disappearing disappearing uh eh, or bill clinton or hey look any powerful rapist 
uh yeah I, I, it's like it, it it's watching these and it's a in all fairness and i know this is a rare thing for me to be fair but there is a lot of there are a lot of things to consider at once but there is it's this i realize identity politics refers to something else but it's kind of this idea that someone stamped themselves as like this is how they're going to prove they're a good person there are people from publications that do cover who, these people do cover politics. And I've seen people at, like business publications doing the dot reply to Trump or to McCain. But I'm not seeing people like fucking hammer these gutless psychopath hypocrites for the shit they've done. I'm not seeing any of them fucking like rip them a new one. And no, I don't expect them to go up against Bill Clinton and take Bill Clinton. I can understand why they're not doing that right now. And also, I can understand why they'd never do it, but that's for a different reason. Like, right now, they're worried that that would be a distraction, and it probably would on some level. It would, it would disappear. But these people are like, picking up an issue. They're like, all right, I don't like uh, rapists. Okay, rapists are bad. Like, everyone knows that. Like, no one likes, no one's like, well, apparently Trump is pro-rape, and apparently a lot of GOP people are too gutless to say it's bad, but it's like there are people repeatedly tweeting. I, I have my feet up, and I've seen five people tweet just like, Trump is a rapist. It's like, why? You've, I, I, in some cases, I've seen the person tweet it twice other today. It's like, who are, you tw- who are you telling? Why are you repeating these things? Are you repeating this mantra so that everyone knows 24 hours a day how good you are? Are you like the fucking CNN of morality? That's exactly it. And it's just fucking depressing. And like that's depressing. It's just watching how fucking unable to unable to stick by I don't know. They they do they even have an identity? And I understand that they're like that that there is and I like there are people I actually respect in the way they've been doing it. Like Farhad Manju, I'm specifically calling out, because every time he tweets about the election, it's just that's weird. That's bad which is the best commentary in the election I've seen yet. Because it's just like, yeah, that is weird. Yeah, that is bad. No discussion, no need to no need to say that. No, like, I mean, I realize it's not a far cry from the let's blow in the cartridge of 2016 bullshit that you'd see from like, pour me coffee. But like, I know. In fact, you know, pause a second. Who the fuck is pour me coffee? Is it a real person? Uh, there is like a, a fervent search for him because people are like, oh my God, who could be writing tweets this, this good? Sh- this shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Imagine how amazed you would be all the time if you thought that guy was funny. Like, you just think everything in the world was fucking terrific. I envy these people. I have to pause for a second because an amazing tweet just came in as a reply that I am going to retweet live on the show which we will then listen to recorded, and I quote, responding to my Theranos thing, where I quoted the runway to realize our vision, from a statement from Elizabeth Holmes. And I quote, and this definitely is an irony, I refuse, if this person attempts to claim it's irony, like, I'm sorry, no. Just because it didn't work well the first time doesn't mean it wasn't still an excellent idea. I hope she can perfect it. <laughs> That's Thank, terrific. That's the best tweet Thank of the you. election. That is the best tweet. Best tweet. And that's the thing. I wish there were more tweets like that about the election. Like people who were just straight. Like though we make fun of the kind of complete and utter brainless love of startups, there is genuinely something to just being completely fucking just blind. Like not blind faith. Like oh, I'll support Trump until the end, and then slowly explain away, and then give up. But I mean, the people were just so fucking just married to this inane gesture. Like if they don't like the people who are like, I'm with her, I'm with her. Why isn't why didn't um Jackie Chan come out and say that he's with her? Why isn't Jackie Chan with her? Why hasn't Nigel Farage said he is with her? And like it's like why has my cat not come out and said my cat is with her? Like it's those people are hilarious because that is the lowest for that's the lowest barrier to entry for this election to discuss it. It's like uh, that one and like Nate Silver saying stating the obvious but there are days when this campaign is so insane and there's so much crazy news that it's literally hard to process 
Now, in the case of Nate Silver, that's probably just him explaining why all of his predictions are fucking wrong. But it's just like, I, 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 I do miss the kind of black and white of this election. That's why I laugh at Ben Garrison and actually respect him more than uh, these chump liberals who are like, well, we got him, we got Trump, or the people, the chump liberals who sat there for hours making Ken Bone jokes and then got into the Twitter moment and then saw, uh-oh, that ain't good. Like, I respect that because it's just fucking stupid. It's just, I like, I, I kind of wish for the true stupidity. And I think that that, that m- may be what people were doing when they were laughing at Trump thinking before he got in there. When they didn't think he had a chance, maybe that's what they were doing. I just don't know because this is, this is politics hell. This is where we are now. Everyone has, everyone has got a degree from politics university that you know now and has an actual fucking opinion and it is the worst. It's not like going on NeoGAF and having someone discuss whether Wario was a libertarian. This is like straight up the political process now. And, the, and as I was saying earlier, people from England are getting involved worse than they were with Bush. And it's just so bad. It's, it's like, that's the thing. People are like, oh, this is the worst election ever. It definitely isn't. And this definitely isn't the worst year ever. And I wish people would fucking stop saying it because like 2004 was fucking horrible. Like, like there, there are several. That was pretty bad. There's, there, if you go back ten years, there've been several worse years. Like, like it's trite to say it, but like the years under Bush were not great. Two thousand eight was a horrible year. Like, way worse than this. Like, significantly worse. All of those horrible things happening to black people were happening there. Like, the horrors that are today were being created then. You just weren't looking. Maybe you weren't able to see. It's dark as shit. It's very dark. It's a very, very dark, but um, to all the guys out there, you will no longer have to pretend to be feminists. And that's soon. what and that's what I'm wondering. Like, will we see them drop out of the feminism election? Oh, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, and then they're going to do it again in four years, and then we're going to find all their problematic tweets again, or, you know, whatever service we're using in four years, probably Fuck Slack. Off. Yeah. When Slack, when Slack becomes a public network called um, yeah. like an internet relay chat. Just bring back forums and IRC. That's what yeah, I'd like. That was, that was a purer time. Like, uh, bring back Usenet. Really Nothing bad happened on Usenet. Oh, wait. You know what? If we're going to wrap it up, though, there were some great things. There were some great things this year, I really think. Not this is the last podcast of the year, but even in the last two <laughs> weeks, we've really seen some amazing things happen. That people have then compared, of course, to the election, such as Galaxy Note Sevens, like just exploding, and watching people try and explain that, and then compare it to Trump, and also the Soylent bars making people like shit their pants. That's the actual shit of the week, by the way. It's like their actual shit. That's pretty and good. Watching just, yeah, I think that, and, and you've seen this election has been amazing, though, in that it has it. It has done some good in shining a big fucking light on some terrible people like Palmer Lucky, the Oculus guy who is like funding a fucking anti anti Clinton thing. Now, no one wants to dig too deep into the tech people, though. No one wants to do that. <laughs> no one wants to like talk about shit like Shrimp Boy in San Francisco and like the connections with Ed Lee. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. That would be way too much. Oh, wait, they found one. They found one though. That's good. That's good. They could you can pillory one, and Theranos happens. Oh, good. That's another good one. Like, but you're starting to see the really dark side of politics. Stick it like it's starting to like knife some people. Like this election was so and has been so out there that you've seen this Trumpism thing where you've seen like real ass libertarians be like. Hey, uh, yeah, I support Trump. Oh God, oh God, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I didn't mean it's it. Like, like Peter pu- Thiel just just won't tell, which means he's still gonna vote for Trump. Peter Thiel, he's just backing out. He's, he's just he's staying quiet. He, he will say something and disappear, which is actually smarter than a lot of people on Twitter right now. Yeah, they're really they're investing those hours into like constantly having a good discussion. Which to bring it back to the people who were like. Hey, you never say shit like that about women that you could find like three years doing it. It's because there is, I think it maybe people feel a pressure. Maybe they're like, you know what? 
I feel like I need to have, I need to say something. I need to say something about this election. Trump's bad. Clapping happens and retweets happen. But I think there is that people feel this weird pressure like they have to comment on it. Like if they don't, it's not even like if I don't, who will? It's, well, everyone else is talking about it. So if I don't talk about it, I'm stupid. And I think it's like being at a dinner party full of people smarter than you, which I regularly have a problem with. And you get that weird pressure that you need to like show like you know that or you're on a date with someone you really like find attractive and you start they're like, oh, I like Nirvana. You're like, uh, uh, Breed's a good album. It's the same thing. Twitter, especially, but Facebook as well has pressurized these people and suddenly they must have this discourse. They must. And I think that's a good place to wrap it up there. I've I I really just think that. We really do need to reset 2016. I think it'd be a really good idea if we just, you know, um, just control alt deleted it. And I think we should uh, unplug it and plug it back in. Like, I agree. I think that we really need to reinstall the operating system on 2016. And whoever cast this, whoever cast this year, I mean, just you, you messed up, buddy. And I mean, to paraphrase the scholar Nick Bilton. If we are in a simulation, clearly there's a glitch. Just look at Donald Trump. Rack em. Elections over right now. Booyah. And that is a great place to close the podcast. I've been Ed Zitron. I've been Felix Speederman. Thanks again for listening to The Scumbag. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>